Hi everyone, my name is Dalia Deban from STL Partners. Today I will be talking about the role of edge computing in driving enterprise um, digital transformation. Um, so when we talk about edge computing, it's always important to do a quick definition on what we mean. Um, I suppose one thing is to put into context, and from an enterprise perspective, it's really about changing the way um, IT infrastructure works and OT infrastructure works, and um, providing enterprises with more options. So before, as an enterprise or a developer, there were only, a few, you know, at the moment even, there are only a few options of where to uh, run and compute and store data. And that's usually either on premises, on a, in a data center, or it's in a remote data center or the cloud. Um, or sometimes, you know, a lot of that data is also processed in the end device, which could be in a car, it could be in a machine, in a factory, um, you know, in a, on a laptop, on a mobile device. And what edge computing is all about is moving that compute and processing in particular and sometimes storage closer to the end device or closer to the, the source of where the data is generated. Um, so edge computing is partly a physical aspect. It's really about you know, it, the compute being physically closer to that source of data. But it's also a software aspect in the sense that it's, it's really about enabling enterprises to be able to move those workloads easily and to be able to access um, infrastructure in a very flexible and seamless way. Um, so the, the, the question is always, you know, then what are the benefits? And there's two ways to look at it. Um, one thing is to say, okay, well, my sort of my status quo, my default option is to host those, the workloads in the cloud. Um, and so, you know, why should I move the, the, the cloud to the edge? Or, you know, why should I move those workloads to the edge? Um, and the first reason is, Latency. It's always about latency. That that's what tends to be brought up in these edge compute discussions, um, and low latency, you know, is you know due to the fact that your the data packet is having to to travel um, across a, a sort of a shorter distance, if you will, um, that reduces the latency of the application, and so things can um, the round trip time and the overall um, application latency can be reduced dramatically by reducing um, you know the time between the data being sort of produced and then processed and, and sort of taken to the cloud. The second thing is um, is the, the cost of bandwidth. And again, you know, there is a cost associated with moving those data packets through a network or through multiple networks if we're going to the cloud um, and bringing that, uh, that compute resource closer avoids the need to have to traverse all over, um, you know, the full network. The last thing is data security, um, and this is becoming more and more prevalent and more of a, a sort of a key priority for enterprises, um, partly because of regulation and you have increasing regulation that's being um, done at a, a sort of a, a national level. Um, uh, and also sometimes it's even at a sort of a state or municipal level. Um, and that can make it very complicated for an enterprise to manage data and also to ensure that data is stored, especially um, in a sort of federated way and um, the enterprise is aware of where the data is stored because you know there are compliance issues related to, um, to data storage and security. Um, the other thing is that you know, enterprises themselves are conscious of their own privacy and security and you know cyber security issues um, and you know we've heard a lot when we've done interviews for, say from the manufacturing industry um, there are the manufacturers themselves are very sensitive about their data their sort of precious IP being in the hands of anyone else so if they're running an IOT application in the cloud for them that's a that you know that could be a sort of a security risk for them because there is a cloud infrastructure company or um, even an IOT solution provider who has potentially access to you know all the IP related to how their manufacturing process works then the other way of looking at the benefits of edge is saying okay well a lot of my compute actually happens on the device or maybe in sort of more monolithic um, architectures on premises or in sort of traditional more dedicated appliances where the software is tightly integrated to the hardware and there isn't this sort of cloud-like remote management capability and the, again you know the reasons there for moving that to an edge um, first of all it's to reduce the cost of infrastructure where you have um, 
where you have, you know, a lot of the time an enterprise has to invest quite heavy amounts of capex um, to put an on-premise data center in place. Or, you know, if if each application, you know, each software is on a separate piece of hardware, that adds up and that takes up space and also it's costly. Um, and you can see that in a certain environment, say in retail, that's particularly an issue where they that real estate is expensive and they don't really want to be using um, that pre- sort of precious space for um, putting in servers. They want to be able to consolidate that. And so taking that off the premises has huge benefits. Um, the other thing is mobility. So, the, I mean, the challenge of putting some, tying something to a device or tying something to a physical location on premises is that you then can't access that application if, you know, if you uh, move around um, and you need that level of mobility. And, um, you know, enterprises, I guess, have... Um, have been able to um, access IT infrastructure to uh, enable branches to access applications, but it becomes more difficult when you have a very remote workforce where you know people are working from home or people are um, or you know there are workers sort of you know in the logistics field or field force workers they always need to access the applications but also need to access them in a way that's resilient and you know with low latency and that's why you may want to run those applications at the edge and then the other sort of the last two points are about uh increasing flexibility and scalability so um again you know bearing in mind that edge compute is also sort of about edge cloud if you will or it's a software element and it's about bringing those capabilities that we have in the cloud around flexibility and scalability to um compute resources which have traditionally been quite siloed in nature or monolithic or not as flexible and um you know by having sort of distributed com- cloud infrastructure almost on um which could be on gateways, which could be in servers, which could be in mini data centers, being able to access all that compute resource in a cloud-like way um, is, you know, is beneficial because it, again, reduces the upfront capex, it makes things more agile for the enterprise where they can scale up um, demand for their compute resources when they need to. Um, and then the last thing is that, you know, by, by sort of disaggregating software and hardware and um, making edge compute sort of uh, accessing edge compute and and using standardized flexible tools that reduces vendor lock-in where you don't have a single vendor to provide you the application the software platforms and the hardware all integrated you can go to different vendors for each part um and this and this sort of next slide just shows that in a different way um where you have um i guess this framework that i've just described um in a nutshell so you know, just to reiterate, low latency, reduced backhaul, data localization, those are key characteristics of computing um, applications locally, historically. So an enterprise will always put their applications on premise if if it's mission critical and low latency is critical um, versus cloud like capabilities are associated with you know the scalability flexibility aspect mobility so being able to access the applications everywhere um having that level of resilience which the cloud brings that sort of thing and so the edge is really bringing those two sides together and these benefits um differ across each different industries and this is quite a high level view of looking at it but you know you as i mentioned you know we've got uh, industries like manufacturing where much of their the types of applications which are going to be running on edges are IT, but are also the OT applications, which are mission critical to running their factory. And so things around low latency, reliability, and keeping data local are paramount to them. But so is reducing backhaul, because by with all that IoT data now being produced, um, with hundreds of cents in a manufacturing plant, that is unfeasible to be um, to, to sort of go to the cloud because of the amount of raw data that it will cost um, to to try you know to, to go over the network you know on the other hand you have I guess um, industries like retail I mentioned where there it's more around maybe taking applications or um, accessing applications which may have resided on a single device before um, so, for example, if, I mean, we'll go through a few a few real life examples here. But in you know in the retail store, you are trying to create immersive experiences, and a lot of the time that is tied to a physical device, which could be a big screen, a sort of digital screen, or it might be a you know augmented reality mirror. And um, historically, a lot of the compute has resided on the actual device, and that's you know that's not great for the for the retailer because. 
um, it's it's a capex. It's a huge investment that they have to make on those expensive devices. There's a security risk to have ex- expensive devices in their store, um, and also um, then they're inflexible. So one, when they want to sort of upgrade the application or change the experience that they're trying to create, that's it's difficult for them because they've already made that investment in those devices. Um, and so so yeah, so broadly speaking, Edge is somewhere between um, these devices where software is tightly coupled with the hardware and the internet or where you know where the data centers are today um and you know there are different almost levels of edge computing where you have um you have say the device edge if we start there um which is you know sometimes you can think of smart devices being a device edge and and this is a bit of a gray area of you know when is it an edge device versus just an ordinary end device with some compute processing i think the key thing is that 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 um that device needs to be you know virtualized if you will it needs to have some of the capabilities that you'd associate with almost like a cloud um application and the types of applications that should be deployed there you know it should almost be drag and drop where it's a cloud native application that you could you could run in in a remote data center you can now run on a device edge um and so examples of devices here could be like a smart camera where um the OEMs are making their um, these devices which you used to just pretty much collect data and do some pre-processing allow them to do more of the analytics and um, you know things like object recognition that sort of thing um, and you know we've and I guess you know there's some quotes here we've spoken to a few I guess companies in the past who are either solution providers so here we've got video analytics solution provider and what they you know why they see there is a move towards device edge and then in other cases we've spoken to sort of end enterprises the second category of edge is on-premises edge, which is putting the edge compute resource, um, you know, at this at the customer site, at the enterprise site, which could be a building, could be a, um, um, it could be a factory, it could be a retail store, as I mentioned, it could be a hospital, um, and a lot of the time, um, you know, this is a lot of you know a lot of time this is about keeping things um, secure in the. Um, in the customer premises, reducing latency by um, putting those uh, applications closer to the source of the data. Um, and then the last kind of category is network edge or multi-access edge computing. And this is coming from the telecoms industry where they are evolving their networking sites. So they have points of presence or facilities that are running their network functions and their network infrastructure. They're evolving those to become more like data centers. Um, and so they um by you know by hosting applications on those types of on that type of edge you dramatically reduce latency um because you reduce the need for the application to go through the network and back and um sort of re- reduce that round trip time and it's interesting i guess to see that what the public cloud providers or the hyperscale cloud providers are doing in this space because um they are moving to the edge they you know their, their bread and butter is the centralized cloud and, you know, their, their data centers would be that sort of internet bucket as I had in the previous slide. Um, but, you know, I guess initially they've, you know, they all have sort of some level of CDN offerings um, and they have a, they have um, access to more regional data centers and space in internet exchange providers, for example, um, and they are increasing their footprint in those data centers. But that's always primarily been for their CDN service or for their internal applications, if you will. So, for example, even though Google's not on here, Google uses its own um, CDN network um, and sort of CDN data centers for YouTube, for example, so to cache YouTube. I think what's changing is that they're now starting to evolve that um those uh those CDN data centers or the premises which they use the third part or the colo data centers that they are using and the stack that they've put in there before it was all about storage and caching now they are evolving it to make it about compute and so they will start to allow developers to access those more regional data centers and regional locations and so AWS for example announced local zones which is a flavor of that and then Azure has Azure edge zones which is their sort of version of a, a kind of a regional data center play. So as a developer, you could now go on to AWS or Azure's portal instead of clicking, um, you know, the Europe South Zone, for example, you would be able to specifically select um, a, you know, a region within that. Um, so just, you know, hypothetically, it could be something like Milan or something. Um, and then, uh, then I guess the next sort of chronologically what happened next is that they moved into the on-premise or the device world and tried to bring in some IoT 
um, services with things like Azure IoT Edge and Greengrass, and that was a software-based solution. What they've done since is evolved that to actually provide a compute uh, device as well, so the physical element, and that's where Outpost and Azure Stack and Azure Stack Edge come along. And then more recently, they're starting to move into the network edge and doing deals with the telecoms operators themselves so that they can put in their stack, uh, which is essentially you know a rack of, um, of their own servers, into the uh, the telcos edge um, and provide their their cloud services from there as well and so with AWS it's Wavelength is their version of the network edge offering with Azure they have something called Azure Edge Zones with Carrier so going I guess going back to then you know the the enterprise though and why does the enterprise you know where does edge fit into their their digital transformation um, I mean we've we've kind of talked about the benefits of edge but it all really fits into a a more broad theme around digital transformation because that's primarily what these enterprises are trying to do. They're trying to transform so that they can either improve efficiencies, whether it's about reducing waste and defects by automatically detecting faults um, in real time using sort of IoT devices, or it could be about increasing the asset lifetime by doing things like predictive maintenance to keep the asset running for longer. So these are the types of applications that Edge enables which then enable digital transformation. And you can see some, um, you know, some quotes here about um, sort of, you know, the dynamic between operational technology and IT technology, and that's coming together. And that's a bit of a challenge, but it's also quite key in edge computing. Um, the other side of digital transformation are these new business models. So, so some of the underlying objectives are about improving efficiencies and primarily saving costs. But on the other side, you also have sort of the new business models element where in many industries, they're moving towards more service type business models. So, you know, X as a service or um, taking manufacturing as an example, um, you know, they're doing things like providing assets as a service um, where, you know, rather than a traditional business model where they will ask the customer to just pay for the product up front, um, they'll provide it as a service and they'll they'll bundle in um, you know maintenance services and insight services um, and allow the customer to know you know if it was an engine for example they would allow the customer to know where the engine is how it's running um, you know how if there's any problems with it that sort of thing. And that's quite core cool for them to survive and to evolve and to keep to you know keep growing their revenue base. The second thing is just sort of a more data driven um, business model where you have um, this sort of data driven product development going on. And again, you know, just taking manufacturing as an example here, um, they you know they need insights on how their products are being used to be able to create the new version of their products whereas before they sort of sold them and they had no idea how the customer was using them who was using them why they were using them and all that sort of thing and that's quite key for them to you know again for com you know for competitive reasons to develop products that are um, uh, beneficial and now I'm just I'm just going to go through a few examples here so um, first one is in manufacturing and I think I've explained some of this where you have kind of an edge compute platform in the manufacturing plant and it's doing things like transforming data aggregating data from multiple machines filtering data that's not you know that's not interesting where for example you have all this raw data coming in from the sensors what you really want to do is be able to filter out the anomalies for example and just send those the spikes or the troughs to a cloud um, some machine learning algorithms might be executed on the edge compute as well um, and that enables applications like condition-based monitoring was which is sort of what i mentioned earlier about being able to remotely monitor assets predictive maintenance which is all kind of a step above that using now ai and ml on that data to be able to predict when a machine is going to break down and, and you know uh, make sure it's fixed ahead of time and then you have things like just general real-time automation of the plant um, and this is you know fundamental for manufacturing as they try and evolve their processes to become industry 4.0 and iot based and i've just got a few um, logos here to show some of the some companies who are providing some of these edge analytics capabilities these sort of software platforms if you will Another big um, application for Edge is uh, AR and VR and a sort of immersive experiences. And here I'm just showing, I guess, different compute resources where you have device, on-prem Edge, network Edge and the cloud. Um, and what happens today is that you have sort of AR applications that could be um, rendered. So the, the actual virtual reality could be rendered from the cloud. And the problem with that is 
you know, latency. Um, and it's very critical for AR and VR, um, especially for virtual reality, because you your frame of reference is what you're seeing in front of you in that virtual reality headset. So if you move and the image doesn't move with you, that actually pr- pr- sort of creates a motion sickness element. And so, you know, the milliseconds that are required are sub 100 milliseconds between, you know, round trip um, to enable that AR, VR application to work properly. And I think what we've seen today is that actually um, most VR applications are run from the device themselves. You have the content loaded on the device or you have it, you know, the device tethered to a local compute um, or a laptop to to do the actual rendering. And that's, you know, that's not ideal and that's not going to um, allow AR, VR to scale. You need it to be fully mobile and you need it to be sort of wireless. And so, um, you know, that's where the network edge or an on-prem edge can really benefit where you run the AR, VR application or you render it from a network edge so that you reduce you can reduce that latency to under 100 milliseconds and you um you then only use the vr headset to display what was rendered from the network edge um and these you know th- these types of things are quite core cool in um in say a retail setting um because retailers are trying to as i said create sort of immersive experiences um both you know in at their stores especially in flagship stores you have you know lots of and sort of immersive boards or digital signs um, you have AR VR happening um, and also in the home where you know today e-commerce is, is you know is evolving quite quickly you can use your mobile phone to um, to sort of look at the product and maybe sort of look at look at it on you virtually or look at how a piece of furniture looks in your room and that all uses augmented reality in the future we may start to you know we will start to see more of that and to have you know very high, sort of high quality high definition AR VR and as the um, the quality of the the um, the image in, increases or improves um, that is a huge strain on bandwidth and that again you know it it drives a need to move that data not from not run it from the cloud, but uh, at an edge. And here we've just got a few examples of companies again who are um, who are starting to to do things around this space. You know, some of it's AR VR. Some of it in the retail setting is more about immersive experiences more broadly and using things like IoT and digitization technology to be able to create um, what what Momomi is doing, which is a sort of augmented reality mirror. So you can go to a changing room and um, and you know. Uh, try different things on virtually um, without having to actually get the clothes, which is, you know, uh, quite an interesting content concept. And again, just sort of bringing it to life. So how is Edge Compute being deployed? Well, there's both Brownfield and Greenfield deployments. You have um, uh, these, are, these are sort of Edge Compute use cases like condition monitoring, which I mentioned about remote monitoring uh, an asset. Some of that Edge Computing is happening on a virtualized programmable logic controller so actually changing what that plc does um, sometimes it's on a sort of a, a, a separate device a server or a gateway or it could be a, you know deployed on a rack of uh, servers in the premises or it could be on a, a kind of on-premise data center so every you know all these things are very customer dependent there are different ways of deploying edge depending on what the needs are and whether there are other edge applications which need to be deployed too in terms of where we are, so we have Edge Compute, which has kind of happened for some time. Um, you know, this is sort of the, the broad idea of on-premise data centers is not necessarily new. Um, but, you know, historically, it's been a bit more standalone where you have the cloud and then you have on-premise and there's less of a distributed compute spectrum. This idea of Edge Cloud is really about moving towards um, distributed compute or distributed cloud, more multi-cloud um, also having sort of hundreds of different compute infrastructure out there where, you know, as we saw on the previous page, these could be small devices or a single PLC or a single gateway to a whole rack of servers or, or a, you know, a full data center. And um, the software is quite important in Edge Cloud where it needs to be a sort of containerized environment in particular to be able to move workloads quite seamlessly across different clouds and to be able to access those um, as a service business model. So even the hardware vendors are moving um, to to sort of as a service business models um, and they can only do that if their plat- platforms are flexible and if they can monitor their platforms and monitor their hardware remotely so um, 
you know, mapping, just mapping sort of the use cases on the spectrum. Some things are at quite an early stage when it comes to sort of autonomous driving and, you know, traffic, managing traffic seem you know, sort of automatically. And some of these more custom engagement, very AR, VR heavy applications. Um, but there are use cases and applications which are more advanced. For example, asset tracking that has been using some level of edge compute in the in the vehicle, for example, for a long time. Um, or car gaming, we're starting to see car gaming um, being deployed in regional data centers, which are a form of edge, you could argue. Um, so, you know, there are things are moving quite quickly. Applications are moving. Sometimes other technologies need to come together um, and sort of advance, whether it's in the IoT space or AR, VR, um, to sort of push things along. And then I guess the last thing I wanted to touch on is just um, the... Um, edge compute uh, challenges and this range from you know some of these are some of the barriers to overcome this ranges from sort of organi organizational ones and non-technology challenges where you have conflicts between IT and OT for example and that's something that's prevalent as say manufacturers move to industry 4.0 um, you know and in general in other you know in other sectors say oil and gas as well IT and OT have been quite distinct now with edge they're coming closer together and there's, you know, there's a challenge of who's the decision maker there. Is it someone who heads up IT? Is it someone who heads up OT? Is there a need to evolve that that um, organizational structure? Second thing is about culture and ed education. As with any, you know, change, this takes time. It takes time for um, enterprises to implement these new applications. So, you know, for example, predictive maintenance, that, um, that fundamentally changes how maintenance is conducted. Um, and that takes time to train people about it, it, takes time to make them comfortable about it, and then, you know, to allow them to give them the tools to to use that technology. Third thing is data compliance regulation. I think I mentioned this at the start, but that's becoming increasing, uh, increasingly a challenge. Uh, and the challenge is um, not just being aware of, of different regulations. So say for a multinational, um, they, they need to be aware of different regulations, different jurisdictions, but they also need to be able to manage their data seamlessly. And today it's quite manual in the sense that you, they sort of either store data in a, in a data center in India, for example, or in China. They have to manually move that data or in, or in the US um, or in Europe. Um, what, you know, ideally what should happen is that things are automated in a way so you can almost label data and that data moves um, in the right edge or the in the right cloud, depending on the needs of the enterprise and also depending on who the user is and where that you know which jurisdiction is relevant to that user. And then the last ones are a bit more sort of technology focused. Where um, the first thing is that you know because of this move from you know a lot of IT is coming into OT and that's a big part of edge moving the that using that IT like infrastructure for OT in an on premise environment or in some kind of edge like. Um, environment um, but the challenge is that it's not drag and drop and that there do need to be some changes so this could be about things like making equipment more ruggedized the servers more ruggedized so that they can withstand the environment in harsh conditions um, you know in a, for example in a remote um, uh, oil rig um, or it can also be about making it suitable for the customer's needs um, in almost the opposite way where again like taking retail or I don't know for example um, in a you know in a kind of a more hospitality environment or in a in a stadium or you know whatever it might be you don't really want huge deployments of edge compute physical deployments you need things that are small um, that can you know slot in easily um, and don't take up too much space and then Second last thing is about making the business case. Um, enterprises do need to have a think about, you know, what's going to be cloud, what's going to be edge. There is a cost associated with both. Um, it can be difficult. And, you know, a lot of these industries are already cash, cash trapped. They're already in a hugely competitive environment. So it's very critical that there is a clear business case for changing how the infrastructure um, evolves. And then the last thing is um, the partner ecosystem. And again, you know, edge is still relatively new and it's not so clear who are the leaders in edge or you know which who to partner with um, and it's quite fragmented because you need you know you almost need different parts of the ecosystem to bring it all together and this diagram here sort of shows that where this is you know this is kind of essentially the value chain of edge where you know you have the faci the facility the premises the network part or connectivity hardware software infrastructure etc 
all these need to come together and there are specialists in each domain so it can be quite confusing for an enterprise but it is quite important to, to pick the right partners to, to build your edge compute so what to do well first thing i guess you know is, is to build that business case to find the key drivers um the kpis figure out which applications need edge um understand this difference between it and o2 and you know how to bring those together um whether there's an also an organizational structure that needs to take place um that you know that's almost its own business case in its own right second thing is defining some guiding pr principles um to make sure that the plan is future proof um so what i mean by that is that you know what what we what edge computing is allowing enterprises to do is to learn from the mistakes of the past where traditionally it's all been about proprietary systems and that has got uh, in this, uh, enterprises in certain industries um in quite a difficult position as they have had external pressure to evolve and they are being disrupted but they're unable to change because their their physical or their IT and OT infrastructure is not flexible um, so it's important to make sure that even though the maybe the applications for edge are not clear yet and it's something you know, there is an unknown for the future but to actually put that foundation in place that will be future proof and will allow the um, the enterprise to be flexible and to change things going forward and then the last thing is you know about selecting the right partners so all these different there's lots of different technologies coming together here not just in edge but there's sort of 5g coming in the horizon iot is a big part ai and ml and ar vr and all these things and so again you know you need to make sure you have the right partners who understand these technologies and are, and are able to um, augment them into their solutions if not today then in the future um, and the other thing is that you know it, it's great to have partners who can bring others together so um, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of companies now, or some companies now, are really taking a role in bringing the ecosystem together and building that ecosystem. Um, and that's across software and hardware and services and that sort of thing. And, and that's kind of critical for this too. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for, um, for listening. I hope you found it useful. I'm happy to take any questions offline. Um, thank you very much.